Okay, so I want to make an announcement, but you know it already, I think. Next Monday is a holiday, right? So we don't have a class next Monday. Yeah. It's Qingmingjie. Um, and then next Friday, we have a class at 12.10, but it will end at, oh, sorry, we have a class at 12.20, but it will end at 1.10, okay? So next Friday, there'll be only one hour of class, okay? Friday. I will make it up at the end. So I think it's going to be on May 1st, okay? Because there are 36 lectures in this course. And if we cancel one, we have to make it up. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, we, we already had one holiday, right? February 28th. And so with this one, uh, so that means we cancel one week of classes and so the classes will be extended by a week and then the classes will be extended by another hour for this one okay but so next week there'll be only one class for one hour on friday uh -huh. uh, okay so let's do some examples uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Because now we know what the Cartan model for a circle action looks like. Um, let's work it out for, you know, our standard example of S1 acting on S2. Okay. By mm -hmm. rotation about the z-axis, okay? Um, <clears throat> so let's, well, let's start with the volume form. On S2, okay? So what is the volume form on S2? It's a two form on S2, which when you integrate, will give you the surface area of the sphere, right? And do you know the formula for the volume form? Yes? Yeah. Uh -huh. If you have taken differential geometry, you know, like there's a metric on the sphere, and so there's a volume form, right? Hmm? You have seen it? Uh, dx wedge dy times z, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's right. So it's, um, um, you take uh, z dx wedge dy and you rotate the variables cyclically, okay? So you have um, x dy wedge dz, and then you have y dz wedge dx, but that becomes minus y dx wedge dz, okay? Yeah, so this is the volume form. This is a form that when you integrate, it will give you the surface area of the sphere, okay? Uh, now this form, oh, okay, that's the volume form. And um, 
Um, so let's choose an x. Okay. x is a non-zero element of the Lie algebra. Uh -huh. uh, uh, now, the Lie algebra here, so the Lie group is S1. And so the Lie algebra is this. Okay. So the Lie algebra is I times R. It's the imaginary line. Uh, I can choose any non-zero element. Uh -huh. So I can choose I can choose I, um, but uh, but I'm going to choose minus two pi i. Okay. Uh -huh. I, I choose minus because you know in defining the fundamental vector field there is a minus sign, right? And so if I have a minus here, then that minus sign will disappear. And the two pi, um, mm -hmm. the yeah yeah uh, well it doesn't have to be two pi, but anyway. I choose a two pi. It doesn't matter, right? Um, so somehow this makes a formula work out better later. Um, yeah. Okay. And and so let's work out the um, the fundamental vector field. Okay. So the fundamental vector field. I mean, it's um, it's a vector field that you get by rotating the sphere with this as the velocity. Okay, so it's going to look like this. Um, <laughs> That's the fundamental vector field, and and the formula. So the fundamental vector field at a point x, y, z. Uh -huh, it's going to be the initial vector of um, e to the minus two pi i t, right? times x, y, z. Mm -hmm. So this is an element of the unit circle in the complex plane, right? And it acts on a point on the sphere by rotation and uh -huh. okay. So it's going to rotate through that angle. Therefore, you multiply by the rotation matrix 2 pi cos of 2 pi t sine of 2 pi t uh -huh, minus sine of 2 pi t cos of 2 pi t 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Right? Because when you rotate, z is fixed. So this is the matrix. This is the rotation matrix, right? That rotates just x and y and keeps z fixed. And so we need to differentiate and evaluate at time zero. And that's going to give me 0, 2 pi here. The cosine of 2 pi 0 is 2 pi mm, uh, minus 2 pi 0 and then 0. Okay? And, okay. And this is equal to minus 2 pi y, 
2 pi x 0. Okay. Now what this means is that this is the vector minus 2 pi y b d x plus 2 pi x b d y. Okay. So that is this vector field. Yeah, this is an action on the left. So does that mean that we should put a minus sign on the exponential? Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. There's a minus sign on the exponential that cancels that out, right? Yeah, that's why I chose a minus 2 pi i here. So here, it's just 2 pi i t. Right. So the definition down here is the Yeah, so here, the angle is 2 pi t, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh, right. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, and, um, yeah, so that, that's my x bar, okay? And then, oh, okay, now, the volume form on the sphere should be invariant, right? And you can check it, so... Uh, this is an exercise. Check that Lx bar of omega is zero. Okay? That would say that the volume form is uh, invariant. So this is Lx, you see, and you just you have to apply it to this. See? So um, yeah, yeah, you just need to compute, say, LXX. Okay, LXX is going to be uh, now the lead derivative applied to a function is just the vector applied to the function, so it will be minus 2 pi y and uh, LX. Uh, y will be 2 pi x right? uh, and Lx dy Lx commutes with d, right? So this is d Lx y and so that will be um, 2 pi dx. Mm -hmm. And then, and so, so let's see, so we can calculate Lx of x dy with dz. Okay. That's going to be Lx x is uh, minus 2 pi y. Uh, dy with dz and then plus x lx dy is 2 pi dx and then lx applied to dz is 0 so yeah okay so this is lx applied to the first term and you should work out the other terms and then see that when you sum it up, they all cancel out and you get zero, okay? And uh, so, the, so this is uh, omega is S1 invariant. The volume form is S1 invariant. Um, uh -huh. Now, In general, you know, an element of the Cartan model is called an equivariant differential form.
and it will be a polynomial in U with coefficients that are invariant forms. So if uh, omega tilde has degree two, then omega tilde, if it has degree two, then it has to be, well, it's a polynomial in U. U has degree two, so you can have U to a higher power than one, right? So it's gonna be omega uh, plus well, omega zero plus, uh, no, omega two plus um, f, f, a function times u, right? If it has degree two, it has to look like this, okay? So where omega two is an invariant two form, and f is an invariant function. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's an equidariant differential form at degree two, okay? And so omega two is an ordinary form. Uh -huh. And then we say that Omega tilde is an equivariant extension of omega two. Okay. So you get the equivariant differential form by adding a term with the U in it. And if this is going to define a cohomology class, then it has to be equivariantly closed. Okay. So omega tilde is equivariantly closed um, if and only if dx of omega tilde is zero. Okay, uh, so let's work out the, an equivariantly close extension of the volume form. So. So we start with the volume form, omega, and then we add an fu to it, okay? And we call this equivariantly closed form omega tilde. And then let's we work out what this f has to be, okay? So we need, so that we need to compute dx omega tilde, and that is going to be d omega tilde minus u i x omega tilde, right? That's the definition of dx. And then, so then I have d of omega plus uh, d f u, okay, and then fdu, du is zero, so minus u i x omega minus u i x f u. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. 
Now, uh, tell me what this term is equal to, I X F U. What's I X of F? Zero, because I X lower the degree by one. F already has degree zero, right? So I X F, that's degree minus one, that's zero. And I X U is zero. Mm -hmm. So this term is zero, okay? And so I have V omega, which doesn't have U in it, plus U times VF minus IX omega. Mm -hmm. And this is equal to zero if and only if this is a polynomial in U, so if it's zero, then the coefficients have to be zero. So V omega is zero, and VF is IX omega. Now, omega is a two form on the two sphere, so V omega is automatically zero. Therefore, I only have one condition that VF is I X omega. Okay? Mm-hmm. And so we need to work out this I X omega. Now, um, mm -hmm. all right. Uh -huh. So this is X bar. And I X omega by definition is I X bar omega, and that's I X bar of um, Y V X V Z. No, this is it. It's uh, X V Y V X V Z minus Y V X V X V Z plus Z, V, X, V, X, V, Y. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And the, uh, um, um, uh, so let's see, what is I, X, bar, V, Y? Uh-huh. You apply this to V, Y. Uh, so it, it's going to be dy applied to this is going to be 0 to pi x d d y. It will be 2 pi x, right? ix dy is 2 pi x. And ix dx is minus 2 pi y. And i x bar b z is 0. Okay. Uh -huh. So i x bar omega is, now that x comes out, uh, i x d y is 2 pi x, so I get 2 pi x squared dz, and then um, the next term gives me plus 2 pi y squared dy, and then I get z, pi x no minus two pi y z uh, this guy right d y uh -huh. and then minus two pi x z d x. 
So, do you agree with that? Uh, no, it doesn't mean it. it doesn't look right. Uh, no, this one is a DZ, I believe. I applied to dx to pi y. That's right. Okay, I think that's what I get. Mm -hmm. And so I can write this as 2 pi. Let's factor out the 2 pi. x squared plus y squared plus d squared dz. And then minus uh, 2 pi z. x plus y plus z, uh, no, just a minute, minus 2 pi z x dx plus y dy plus z dz. Okay, I write it like this. Mm hmm And now, x squared plus y squared plus z squared is 1, because it's the unit sphere. So this is 2 pi dz. Uh -huh. And what is this equal to? 0, right? Because x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 1. If you take the d of both sides, you get x dx plus y dy plus z dz equals 0. OK? So i x omega is 2 pi z. And, and so z, so this is equal to d of 2 pi z. Okay, so that means f, f is equal to 2 pi z. Thus, omega tilde is equal to omega plus 2 pi z u is equivalent to be closed. And this is the equivariantly closed extension of the volume form. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this will define a cohomology class in equivariant cohomology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Okay. Now, I'm going to prove a theorem. You see, I'm still trying to um, figure out what the ring structure is on the equivariant cohomology of the two sphere, right? We worked out the equivariant cohomology as a module, but we still don't know the ring structure, okay? So in order to figure out the ring structure, I need some theorem about equivariant cohomology of a circle action. Uh -huh. um, and this involves some algebra. Uh -huh. Okay, so this, this is called localization. Uh -huh. Localization. Um, in commutative algebra, it just means that you introduce denominators, okay? So, um, so suppose you have a R of U module. U 
You see, we are looking at equivariant cohomology of a circle action. So the coefficients are the equivariant cohomology of a point. And what is that equal to? It's the cohomology of the classifying space of the circle, which is CP infinity. And the cohomology of CP infinity with real coefficients is R of U. Okay? So that's our coefficient. When you work with equivariant cohomology of a circle action, it's always a module over R of U. Yeah. Uh, and, okay, I use this N, this is the bold face N, to be the non-negative integers. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And we define the localization of N with respect to U to be all the fractions x over a power of u, okay? where x is in n and m is a non-negative integer. Okay? And then we introduce an equivalence relation for two fractions to be equal. So two fractions are equal if uh, unx minus umy. Well, in an integral domain, you can say that that's zero. But there might be zero divisors. So uh, we say that these are equal if there exists a k such that uk times this is equal to zero, okay? So that's the equivalence relation. Uh, okay? Uh, now, well, if you have an integral domain, then you don't have to worry about that UK. Um, so, so suppose I take R of U, and I localize at you. Okay. Then what do I get? It means that I have a polynomial in U divided by some power of U. Okay. Um, so. Uh, yeah, so it would be something like this, right? Uh, A0 over un plus A1 over u n minus 1. Uh, okay, let's say u A minus 1, A minus m, A uh, minus n plus 1, and then a minus 1 over u plus a0 plus a1 u plus u to the k, where a i are real numbers. Okay? So if I localize with respect to u, I get something like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now do you know what this is called? This this is not a polynomial, but it is uh, from complex analysis. It's called a Laurent polynomial. Okay, yeah, it, you stop, so it's a polynomial. Okay. 
Okay? So we have the Laurent polynomials in U, and you can write this as, this is really the same as R of um, a polynomial in 1 over U, right? With coefficients in the polynomials. So this is also the polynomial generated by U and 1 over U. Okay? So that, that's the localization of R of U. Um, and uh, uh, now, N of U can be multiplied by things like this, right? So N of U, N sub U becomes N uh, R of U sub U module. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there is a module R of U module homomorphism from N to N sub U. Okay, let's call it I because you just map X to X over one. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, what is the kernel of I? Set of all x in n such that x over 1 is equivalent to 0 over 1. Right? And that means there exists an u, a uh, k, in the non negative integers such that u to the k times x minus 0 is 0. Okay. So the kernel of i consists of elements that's annihilated by a power of u. And these are called the u-torsion elements. In N. Okay. The U torsion elements in N. Uh -huh. So there is an exact sequence okay. from the U torsion in N, which is inside N and then this maps to n sub u, okay? Uh-huh, okay. And, well, so this is that if n sub u is zero, then this would be an isomorphism so that every element of n would be u torsion. Okay, so now I have this proposition. N is U torsion. Oh, let's first make the definition. Definition is that N is U torsion if every element in N is U torsion. And then the proposition is that N is U torsion if and only if N sub U is zero. Okay. And in one direction, this is obvious. 
if n sub u is 0, then from the exact sequence, you get u torsions in n. You get this is an isomorphism, but it's an injection, so it's an equality. Okay? And then, let's see, in the other direction, um, so suppose every element is U torsion. So there exists a K such that UK times X is zero. And that means uh, oh uh, no, I think sorry, I have to start with an yeah. I have to start with an element in N U, right? So, yeah, so I suppose n is u torsion, and I start with an element uh, x over un in n u. Uh -huh. And then, so since n is u torsion, there exists a k such that u to the k x is zero, and then you just write x over u to the m, that's equivalent to x to the k u, uh, u to the k x, u to the k, u to the m. You multiply the top and bottom by the same thing. That doesn't change the fraction, and that's, this is equal to zero over something. So, so it's zero. Yeah, so n sub u is zero. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, so this is what localization is useful for. If you localize and you get zero, then you know that n is u torsion. Uh -huh. Uh huh. Okay. Now, what is an example of a uh, U torsion module? Let's see. Okay. So this is the first theorem. Um, if S1 acts freely on M, then the equivariant terminology is U portion. Um, you write down the carton mixing diagram. Yes. So this is a carton missing diagram, right? Mm -hmm. And if S1 acts on M freely, what can you say about this? Yeah. 
Uh, oh. Um, well, yeah. Th this will be a principal S1 bundle. And then what can you say about this map? If this is a principal S1 bundle, what's this map? In the cartons mixing diagram. Well, remember, it, huh? it's a fiber bundle whose fiber is this ES1, right? So if this is a principal bundle, then this is a fiber bundle with fiber M. If this is a principal bundle, then this is a fiber bundle with fiber ES1, okay? So since S1 acts freely on M, M over, uh, so this, is a fiber bundle with fiber ES1, okay? And so when you write down the homotopy exact sequence of this fiber bundle, you can conclude, because all the homotopy groups of ES1 are zero, so what can you say about these two spaces? they will have the same homotopy groups. So they are weakly homotopy equivalent. Sequence. MS1 is weakly homotopic to M over S1. Okay, and so uh -huh. now by a theorem in algebraic topology, and this is in Hatcher's book. If two spaces are weakly homotopic, then they have the same cohomology. Equivariant cohomology of M, okay. And uh, now this is the cohomology of a finite dimensional manifold. is a finite dimensional vector space over R. Okay. On the other hand, equivariant cohomology is an R of U module. So R of U is a PID, principal ideal domain, and a module over a principal ideal domain has a structure theorem, so it's going to be a number of copies of R U plus uh, torsion. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, so, uh, but if it has any free part, it will be infinite dimensional over R. And since you have a finite dimensional vector space, so that says that 
the equivariant cohomology is Gaussian. And in fact, um, it has to be U torsion because because if you take any element, um, let me see. Well, no, let, let's stop here. So it, well, I'll just say that it's torsion. Let's do you torsion next time. So stop, let's stop here. Okay. So this proves that <laughs> if the action is free, then the equivariant cohomology is torsion. Yeah? So torsion means that it's annihilated by some polynomials in U. Yeah? but I actually want to show that it's annihilated by a power of u. Okay. All right, we'll stop here. Um, so again, uh, next Monday is a holiday. The next time we meet is Friday, April 7th, and we'll meet for just one hour. Okay. okay.